Welcome to the broadcast, friends. I am so glad that you are connected with us today. And I have a very special guest today. I have my son, Aaron, and he is a tremendous man of faith. And we're gonna be talking about the first key of faith, which is making a decision. Make a decision to follow Jesus and to surrender to his will, and it will change your life for good because God's plan for you is better than yours any day of the week. Blessings. Friends, we are here today and we are talking about four keys to faith. And today we're gonna to specifically talk about making a decision. My good friend, Jesse Duplantis said something one time and it just stuck in my mind. He said, most of the time in the realm of faith, I made a decision and God honored it. So we're gonna talk about making a decision. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Faith is pleasing to God and we can please God with our faith. Praise God. That's awesome. Well, it's great to be on the show. I'm Aaron Purdue. I'm Pastor Lawson's oldest son. I'm uh, here on staff at the church, and it's great to be here with you all on the show today. Praise the Lord. So um, we're going to be talking about, you know, really faith today. And, and in the New Testament, there are two themes that really stand out, the realm of grace, and that is what God has done for us in the realm of faith. And faith is our positive response towards the gospel. But this aspect of making a decision, I believe that's very foundational in the realm of faith. Great mm -hmm. people of faith are decisive people. Amen. You know, Andrew Womack, I believe, is a great man of faith. He's a decisive person. He makes a decision. He sticks with it. Praise God. Yeah. Um, you know, I think God, God allows us to make decisions a lot of times too. I remember when I was praying um, about going into full-time ministry about six years ago, my dad offered me a position here at the church as the associate pastor. And at the time I was completing my doctorate in classical music and I was praying about what to do. And um, I felt that God was nudging me in the direction of ministry, but I, re I really felt that he was telling me that Aaron, it's your choice. You can decide to stay in music. You'll succeed in music, but um, it's your choice to go into ministry. And if you go into ministry, you'll, you'll be very successful in ministry and do a lot of great things for the kingdom. But God gave that decision to me. So faith, um, I think a lot of times it's like what you said, it's making a decision and just going for it and God backs it up. Praise we need God. to hear from God, but God wants us to make decisions. Um, you know, he, he, he values our free will. Yeah. Part of this, you know, I'm talking about, and I was going to talk about that aspect with you, but is whose plan are we going to follow? Are we going to follow God's plan or our own plan? Mm -hmm. And you know, God's plan for us is better than our plan for us any day of the week. Amen. But uh, you know, one of the first ones, you know, when we talk about great people of faith, if you look into Hebrews 11, mm -hmm. it's, it's an aspect of the faith hall of fame and all these different people of faith. Abel chose to, to bring his best offering. Mm -hmm. Enoch chose to walk with God. Noah chose to build an ark. Abraham and Sarah chose to become pioneers and go out into a land that they would later receive for an inheritance. Mm -hmm. So what are the key decisions that we make in life? Well, I think the first key decision that we make is who are we going to serve? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Joshua 24 verse 15 says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. I remember, Aaron, when you were in high school, you made this statement. We, you know, you can be in drugs, you can be in alcohol, you can be in witchcraft, mm -hmm. you can be involved in sex, mm -hmm. or you can serve Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that was simply to me, just you saying, I've made a decision, I'm gonna serve Jesus. Mm -hmm. And there's all these other things that are available, there's all these other things that are out there, but I have made a choice, mm -hmm. I'm gonna follow Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just don't buy this stuff that, you know, everybody has to succumb to their surroundings. Mm -hmm. And I know when we moved to Colorado Springs, a lot of my ministry mentors were really concerned about us moving here. And I knew that you were already, you were 
going to be a freshman in high school between your eighth grade and, and freshman year, you were very secure in who you were. Mm -hmm. I knew Andrew, our middle son, who was going into seventh grade, was already very secure, very stable. I didn't know about Peter. Peter was just going into fifth grade. Mm -hmm. But one day that summer, we were driving uh, across town, and there's a store that sells alcohol and tobacco. And Peter said, I can't believe anybody does that to their body mm -hmm. and destroys their body with that. And I thought, you know what? I don't have to worry about Peter. He's mm -hmm. very secure, too. Mm -hmm. And praise God, you all... You know, all of you boys have made good choices. You all made a choice at a young age to serve Jesus. You followed through with that. Mm -hmm. uh, you all went to secular colleges, but you know, you you were surrounded with a lot of wickedness. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of. I know one time I went to visit you in college when you were in Carnegie Mellon, and you know, some of the kids that were around. You said, "Dad, did you notice they were high on drugs?" I didn't even notice, but you could tell. Mm -hmm. But that didn't affect you. No. Um uh, I, I was actually talking to a young man um, who's about 18, 19 years old here at the church recently. I took him out to lunch. He helps me out by serving on the music team. And um, I just asked if, if he ever thought about going to college, and he said he was thinking about it. Um, but I, I just said, you know, you're going to be okay because you've decided to follow Jesus. But I said, if you, if you go to college and think, well, I'm just going to find myself in college, uh, you're going to get lost really easily. If you think you're going to find yourself in the world, you're going to lose you're going to lose yourself. You're going to lose your purpose. You're going to lose what you're created to do. You have to find yourself in Jesus. You can't find yourself in the world. You can't find yourself in relationships with other people. You can't find yourself in money or in success or in a career. You really find your true purpose in Jesus. So you have to make the decision, I'm going to follow Jesus. No turning back. Um, you got to serve somebody. Amen. There's a song that says you got to serve somebody. It might be the devil, it might be the Lord, but you got to serve somebody. A lot of people serve themselves, serve their own feelings, serve this um, present evil age. Yeah. And, you know, it's not even, you know, you went to Carnegie Mellon University and got your undergrad, your BA, and then uh, Andrew, or you went to Rice University and got your master's and your doctorate. Mm -hmm. And both secular colleges, but you did very well there. You, you were, you were part of the Christian community. Um, what there was, you said at Carnegie Mellon, you didn't have a lot of other believers mm -hmm. there. But you found a church. You had to ride a bus, at, you know, two buses actually. It took mm -hmm. you an hour and a half to get to church. But you got involved in a church family. You did really, really well there. You got involved in a good church in Houston. You did well there. Um, your brother Andrew went to Colorado School of Mines, mm -hmm. and for a while he tr uh, commuted back you know, and forth to Colorado Springs because it's about a, you know, a little over an hour drive. So it wasn't too bad to Golden. Um, but he got his uh, BA and his master's there. And then he got married and him and Bree found their own church in Denver. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, they did very well. They never wavered. And Peter went to Princeton University, and our youngest son. And, and Peter was involved in a Christian uh, faith group, mm -hmm. evangelical faith group, uh, um, faith in Action at Princeton University. And he started out the first year, it was about 25 students, mm -hmm. and he was in the leadership. By the time he graduated, they had over 500 students. Mm -hmm. Such a revival there on the campus, and they couldn't find enough people to facilitate all the different Bible studies. So, you know, a lot of times people look at all the negative, and I know at the time you guys were going to college, there were a lot of different people, and there was a Christian, you know, a person that does things. And he said, well, 90% of, of people lose their faith. You know, students lose their faith when they go to college. And I just didn't buy it. I, I don't, didn't have faith to begin with. That's right. I, I don't believe 90% of anybody loses their faith. They mm -hmm. never really had faith. They mm -hmm. never were born again. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe that 90% of believers reject their salvation. I just don't believe that. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that's scriptural. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were people quoting that, trying to get people signed up in Bible college. But you know, even some of the top Christian schools. I used to tell people that went to these top Bible schools. Now there's two kinds of people here. There's people that are like you that love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then there are people that their parents sent them here to get saved. Mm -hmm. And you've got to figure out the difference. And I learned that observing people that went to these, some of these top full gospel, you know, Christian schools, mm -hmm. 
And, and so it's not just where you go to college. It's a decision that you've made in your heart that I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to serve Jesus. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is my Lord. There's no other way. I am, Jesus said, I am the way, yeah. the truth, and the life. And no faith, man comes a, to the Father except by me. A faith-filled life is a purpose-filled life, too. You know, I went to college, but I went there with a purpose. I wanted to become the best musician I could be. So I was there not to try to find myself, try to find a way of thinking, try to find, you know, different. I was there to become a really good musician, and that school the time had the greatest you know flute professor that I wanted to study with my brother Andrew went to, to school because he wanted to become a great engineer he wasn't going there to try to he was going there by faith to become a great engineer so he was there was purpose you know driving driving him and keeping him on track right your son Peter you know graduated from Princeton did very well but after he graduated, him and his wife, Kendra, went to a graduation at Stanford University. Mm -hmm. And I remember Peter talking about how he was horrified how so many young people didn't live with purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and purpose will keep you going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know I taught you boys from the book of Daniel, which is another story, but purpose is one thing you want to live with. They mm -hmm. purposed in their heart, mm -hmm. you know, not to defile themselves mm -hmm. with the king's meat. And it, it was about their covenant with God. Mm -hmm. We have a covenant with God and that changes our life. So when you make a, a decision to serve Jesus as the Lord, to serve, to surrender to his lordship, it, it changes your life. And, and then you have a purpose that's greater than yourself. The second is key decision I think that every buddy needs to make is what are we going to believe? Mm. You know, what, mm -hmm. are we going to believe the Bible is the word of God? Mm -hmm. Are we going to believe the scriptures? And, you know, talking about this, I had a good friend and he was a Lutheran pastor and he grew up and he was actually molested as a young child and thought he was homosexual. He never acted out, but all through college. And then he went into ministry school and he went to a conservative Lutheran school. And at this school, he, he came to the point that he had to decide whether the Bible was the Word of God or it wasn't. And he said, I, I made a choice that if the Bible was the Word of God, then I was not gay mm -hmm. because God doesn't make people. That's a choice that people made. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I made a decision to believe the Bible, to mm -hmm. believe the Word of God above what people's thinking is, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And in Deuteronomy 30, verse 11, it says this in verse, it says, this commandment which I command you this day is not hidden from you, neither is it far, far off. It is not heaven in heaven that you should say who will go up to heaven and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea. In other words, if God, what you were talking about living with purpose, if God wants you to do something, you know what? God will get you there and he will connect you to the people. Everybody is within four relationships of anyone they need to connect with to do anything that God has called them to do. Mm -hmm. And so don't say it's up in heaven and we can't get there. Don't say it's beyond the sea that you should say who will go over the sea. This is Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 30, verse 13, for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is near mm -hmm. you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. The word is near you. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. And this actually is quoted in Romans chapter 10. And in Romans 10, when Paul quotes this, he's actually talking about Jesus already came from heaven, lived on the earth, lived a sinless, holy, perfect, pure life, died on the cross for our sins. God raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. And now it's your choice whether you believe the gospel and receive Jesus as Lord. Yeah, I love what it's saying here for the commandment which I command you, commanded you today. So God's word, it's saying it's, it's here. You know, when you hear God's word, faith is not inactive. You know, faith is a very active thing. That's why the Bible says faith without works is dead. Um, faith is a very active thing. Um, and I just like that it's, you know, these verses here in Deuteronomy 30, God is saying that um, you know, once you hear the word of the Lord, you're without excuse. You know, yeah. you, have, you have to take action. You can't say, well, if it's in heaven or it's too far away, it's across the sea. Like it. Right. Well, Jesus has made salvation ultimately available to mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah. And the gospel actually says, that everybody is without excuse. Mm -hmm. We can't blame anybody because the word is near us. It's in our heart and in our mouth. That is the word of faith that we preach. And I like that it's saying too, it's not too mysterious. You know, like uh, when God speaks, it's not too mysterious. I love yeah. that, what it says here, Deuteronomy 30, 11, for this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious. Yeah, that's in the New King. Some people act like God it. is so mysterious, <laughs> like we can't, 
you know, you faith know is a mis mystery, but it's like not. Like in the book of Acts, they built an altar to the unknown God. Mm -hmm. and Paul said, to who you ignorantly worship, I now declare to you. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take a very short break and we'll be back right after this break. Stay tuned. Friends, this week we've been sharing on faith in God will change your world. And I am so happy to be uh, sharing with you this faith package. I have this book from my good friends, Mark Hankins, Mark and Trina Hankins, on the spirit of faith. We have World Changing Faith, one of my best series. We have Four Keys to Faith. And then finally, we have Have Faith and Doubt Not. These are some of my very, very best teachings on the realm of faith. And if you begin to understand faith, I believe it will literally change your life. It's changed mine, praise God. It's changed my financial position. It's changed my spiritual condition. It's changed my physical condition. And it's all good. God wants to do good things in your life and he does it through grace and faith. So if you wanna get this teaching, just give us a call today or check us out online. Thanks so much and blessings. Praise the Lord, friends, we're back and we've been sharing on faith makes a choice, mm -hmm. praise God. And we've made it a choice, first of all, to serve Jesus. Now, we're in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30. We're gonna jump into verse 15. He says, see, I've set before you this day life and good, death and evil in that I command you this day to love the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments that you may live and multiply, that the Lord will bless you in the land wherever you go to possess it. You know what? God wants to bless you. Mm -hmm. You know, he sent Jesus, the scripture says, to bless us in turning us from our iniquities. Mm -hmm. But if we're gonna walk in that blessing, we have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Now you went to school to be a musician. Mm -hmm. And you made this decision, I think, very early in college. In fact, you were sharing it, Karis Bible College, and I, I heard you sharing it one day. But you were talking about how uh, many uh, of the students around you, you know, that they were poor managers of their time, they were poor managers of their money, and they were poor people. Mm -hmm. So you made a decision while you were going to school to be a musician. You said, Daddy, I'm gonna be a good manager of my time, I'm gonna be a good manager of my money, and I'm gonna be a millionaire. Now you made that decision, what, how old were you? 19, 20 years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're a millionaire already. Mm -hmm. So supernaturally, God has blessed you, and God has helped you. Now, God did that, right? I don't actually pay you a lot uh, for, for being an assistant pastor, but you made a decision to be blessed, and God honored that mm -hmm. decision. Yeah. And while you were in college, God gave you different ways. Supernaturally, you believed to pay off your college debt. First of all, you, you know, the devil tried to kill you when you were a senior in college, mm -hmm. and you made a decision. Laying in a hospital bed that, praise God, mm -hmm. by the time I graduate, I'm gonna have $1,000 in the bank and I'm gonna have all my bills paid. Mm -hmm. And when it didn't even look like you could work, and, and you started buying and selling things, and that happened. Mm -hmm. And then you made a decision you know, uh, to pay off all your college debt supernaturally. And I told you, you could do it in a year. If you'd believe God, you said, Daddy, I believe it and I'll do it in six months. Mm -hmm. Praise God, it happened just mm -hmm. like you said. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's true. And then uh, I remember when I dropped you off to, to go ahead and get your doctorate after you got your master's. And I told you, Aaron, if you'll believe God, I, I texted you a message. By the time you graduate uh, from college, you know, with your doctorate, you'll have $100,000. Now, most people have a few hundred thousand dollar debt. Mm -hmm. You had zero debt and you had all your college debts paid off and you didn't have 100,000 net worth when you graduated from college, you had a $200,000 mm -hmm. net worth. Because God, you know, you made a decision to believe God and God gave you away through an online business that you developed and you were making $10,000 a month while you were in college. Mm -hmm. But see, you made a decision, first of all, to believe God mm -hmm. and live in the blessing. And, and you know what? If you make a decision, you know, then God will give you creative ways and stuff to, to work those promises in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's different things for different people because mm -hmm. we're all unique. But it starts with a decision in your heart. And so God said, choose life. He, he goes on down there. And he says, if your heart turns away and you don't hear and you're drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, in verse 17, he says, I denounce that you will surely perish and that you will not prolong your days where you pass over Jordan to go and possess it. But I call heaven and earth to record, verse 19, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. 
I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed shall live. Mm. Praise God. So we've chosen life. I chose life, praise God, and it's affected all my children mm -hmm. in a positive way. I believe that's going on down and affected my grandchildren in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Praise God, and we want to see this covenant with God, this you know, relationship with the Lord renewed to the, in the third generation, praise mm -hmm. God. But yeah. uh, you made a decision, praise God. You've made it, tell us about some more decisions you've made. Yeah, I just love that. Um... God, God says, this is your choice. You can choose between life and death, blessing and cursing. And I, I like that he just gives the answer there. Choose life. There's a better way. You know, some people um, just really um, don't want to choose God, don't want to choose his ways. And it doesn't lead down a good path. Yeah. So always, always choose God. Always cho choose to, to follow him Amen. and to hear his voice and just do what God tells you to do. Amen. So key decision. Who are we going to serve? We're going to serve Jesus. We're going to serve the Lord. What are we going to believe? We're going to believe the scriptures. We're going to believe the promises of God. Mm -hmm. You know, I made a choice. I'm going to believe whatever God says in his word. When he promises healing, I'm going to believe it. When he promises peace, I'm going to believe it. Mm -hmm. When he promises prosperity, I believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody said, well, I don't know what I think about this prosperity gospel. It's not the prosperity gospel. It's the gospel. Mm -hmm. And it's just, well, what, the first thing is, what does the scripture say? What does the word of God say? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Well, I know. Jesus is Lord, praise God, and he not only paid for my forgiveness, he paid for my health, he paid for my fi financial and physical prosperity. And, and the third thing is, whose plan are we gonna follow? Mm -hmm. And I wanna read these scriptures if we have time in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 to verse 29, but it talks about Moses. And Moses made a decision mm -hmm. that he was gonna follow God's plan, mm -hmm. praise God. And you talked about this early in the early in the broadcast, but you made a choice to follow God's plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And God's plan for your life is a good plan. Mm -hmm. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, this is Hebrews 11, verse 24, when he was come of years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enter, enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect to the repayment of the reward. For by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, he endured, seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn would touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land, with which the Egyptians talking about doing were drowned. So by faith, Moses refused, he chose, he esteemed, he respected what God said, he forsook Egypt, he did not fear the wrath of the king, and he endured mm -hmm. seeing him who is invisible. Moses mm -hmm. made a choice. Mm -hmm. Now you've made lots of choices. Yeah, I think, I think in the world today, um, there's a lot of pressure to compromise the word of God. The word of God is very clear. I love what God just says, there's life, there's death, there's good, there's evil, there's blessing, there's cursing. A lot of um, just modern Christianity here in our country tries to water things down not to offend people, not to make it so black and white, but don't compromise God's word. When God speaks through his word, the Bible, it is very black and white, it is very clear. Jesus is Lord, he's either Lord or he's not. Amen. You know, um, so don't don't compromise the word of God. Don't try to water it down. Um, just just receive the, the the word completely. And that's I like that you said that earlier in the broadcast. Do you really have to make a choice concerning the Bible, concerning God's word? Is this God's yeah. word or is it not? I remember a few years ago I was watching a, a documentary about Billy Graham. At the time he was in college, he was going to Wheaton College, a Christian college, and um, he was kind of wrestling in his heart whether or not the Bible was the infallible, the perfect word of God. Is it God's word? Is it perfect or is it not? And he said, you know what? I came to the point where I just said, you know, by faith, I'm gonna believe that th this Bible is the absolute perfect, pure word of God. And he said, whenever I preached, I would just preach the word of God. And that's what changed lives. That's what brought Amen. thousands upon thousands of people to Jesus was because I preached the, the Bible and the Bible is the word of God. So if, if you're wrestling with that in your heart, you know, am I going to believe the entirety of God's word? You need to say, yes, the Bible is God's word. It is perfect. It is pure. It's infallible. And, and um, 
God's word is powerful. If you make that decision, that's one of the greatest, the first greatest faith decision you can make is really to follow Jesus, to make him, to say that he is Lord, but he is now not just Lord, but he's your Lord. But the second decision you make is, is I'm going to believe the Bible. I'm going to believe God's word. Amen. You know what? Believe in the word of God will change your life. Mm -hmm. And I know I was pastoring for six years before I got a revelation of grace. Mm -hmm. And that really changed my life. But you know, I had a young man that came to my church those first six years and then went to college. And he said, Pastor, the church was growing and people were being ministered to and healed and set free and saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And I asked Barbara, Mom, I said, why do you think that was? Because I didn't have a revelation of grace. She said, because you taught the Bible mm -hmm. and you taught people faith. You taught them the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And when you teach the Scripture, when you teach the Word of God, it's the Word of God that builds faith in the hearts of people so that they can receive what God has promised them. Mm -hmm. And you've received so many of the promises of God. I've received so many of the promises of God. And you know, I, I haven't received everything that I believe for, but I've, I've received lots of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of things I receive and then I have to believe in it. I'm believing God today for more than I've ever believed him for in my life. Mm -hmm. Praise God, faith isn't a dead thing where you've arrived, you just keep going in this realm of faith. Mm -hmm. And it's, an, it's a marvelous thing. Mm -hmm. So we just have a few uh, seconds here before we go off today. Do you wanna say anything to the people? I just uh, love this show that we're talking about faith. I think a lot of people have a lot of misunderstandings about faith. They think faith is a very mysterious thing, but I like what God says. It's not too mysterious. You know, God's word is plain. His will is plain. His desires for us are plain. They're written down, recorded in scripture. So um, faith is really just, just putting action to what God says in your heart. You're going to actively follow God. You're going to actively um, um, believe the word of God, apply it to your life. And um, if you're looking for a word from God, I just encourage you to spend time in the word. You know, uh, God, God leads us and guides us from his word. So if you're looking for direction in life, you know, I want to start actively um, applying faith to my life. Uh, spend some time in the word of God. God will speak to you. He will minister to you and he will, he will lead you and guide you through his word. Praise the Lord. I want to say a big thank you for staying tuned with us today. If you need prayer, give us a call today. You know, we talked about making Jesus your Lord. You can do that. You can be healed. You can receive the promises. And if you want to become a partner or receive our product, give us a call today. We would love to hear from you. Blessings. What is faith? Do I need more of it? And how do I exercise what I have? In this package, containing Mark Hankins' book, The Spirit of Faith, and CD series, World Changing Faith, Four Keys to Faith, and Have Faith, Doubt Not, you'll learn the answer to these questions and more. You can get this special package for $59 when you call 719-418-4000 or visit charischristiancenter.com. Did you know that you can stay connected with us? We have a church app. You can get it for your phone. You can get our most recent videos, audio, stay connected with the church. All of it's absolutely free of charge. Stay connected with the different things that are happening in different departments. We'd love to have you get our new church app. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.